I had earlier mentioned my interest in heading north to Da Nang and places beyond on a day trip. Fortunately, my new friends, Anne and Jerry, offered to show me the way. So, after renting a bike for four dollars and strapping on a borrowed helmet, we all left Hoi An and took the coast road north. The bike was small, the shifting jerky, I hadn't ridden one in 16 years, and, and, well, you can see, she had a little trouble with the camera. But only after about 15 minutes of driving, we came to our first stop, a peculiar cluster of jagged hills known as the Marble Mountains. And around them were a plethora of carvers, and shops selling sculptures of all sorts. Oh, well, now I know where Darcy Bustle came from. Not stopping long, though, we drove further north and into the city of Da Nang. It looked fairly normal, not much different than any other city, but we headed to a destination in Da Nang that had, well, special personal significance to me. In 1972, a young Marine sergeant spent a few months in this city before pulling out with his squadron, VMF-232. That man was, in fact, my father. Here he is the day he left. That boy is one of his replacements. So we headed to the place where my dad spent most of his time, what is now called Da Nang Airport. I didn't know quite what to expect, but I guess I shouldn't have been too surprised. It was just like any other mid-sized airport in Southeast Asia. Not much left from the old days. Except for a few old hangars and concrete revetments in the distance. And an old control tower, lost amongst newer construction. So we stopped at a roadside vendor and had some lunch. I had a really good meal, but I had some coconut. And I'm going to try to stuff this down. There's no way I can eat a full coconut. <laughs> to me, Da Nang seemed to be the best representation of today's Vietnam, of any city I'd yet seen. What's more, it had another thing which my father had told me about. China Beach. Well, actually, the beach runs about 30 kilometers from Monkey Mountain to Hoi An. But we weren't exactly sure which part was the famed R&R destination of the American servicemen all those years ago. Somewhere around here. After that, we headed back through the maelstrom of human and machine, that is, Da Nang traffic, and made our way to the mountains looming close by. After getting to the mountains on the north side of the city, we were finally at a place that I had been waiting to see for many years. One of the major reasons I came to Vietnam. And well, there was only one thing that I could say. Some say that it's a deserted movement of perfection. And that it's one of the greatest coast roads in the world. In the world. All we know is, it's called the High Van Pass. And I'm about to drive it on a motorcycle. The climb began immediately from the coast, steep enough to make it interesting, but not enough to make it slow. The road was buried in grade, and the curves opened up to new vistas, making every turn a new experience. By this time, I was comfortable enough with the bike, and as the road went on, I really began to thrash it. Well, I mean, as much as one can thrash a scooter anyways. Before we knew it, we were at the top. My altimeter reading 510 meters, or about 1,600 feet. It was sort of eerie, dark, and misty, the clouds whipping through some old American fortifications. And yet not too far below, the sun shone brightly off of the ocean, with Da Nang spread out below. 
but after a brief look, we charged down the other side. We found a little path to a village on the beach, where we met a young girl. Yodwin. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Caleb. <laughs> Her father had later staggered out of his house and tried to get us to drink some rice wine with him. Yet, judging from past experiences with the potency of rice wine, we declined and, well, headed back up the pass. <laughs> Truly, as far as roads go, the High Van Pass is one of the best I've ever been on. It's close to the nearby cities of Da Nang and Hoi An. It's a coastal road and a mountain road at the same time. And it's challenging enough to excite, but not treacherous enough to induce fright. Definitely all that I had hoped for. On the way back, and still wanted us to try to find the famed China Beach. We did find a beach, but we found out that China Beach actually was about two kilometers north of us, surrounded by big resorts which required you to pay to eat on the beach. Well, I mean, after all, a beach near Da Nang is a beach near Da Nang, isn't it? And I'm sure if I told my dad that I had found China Beach, he wouldn't know the difference, right? Be that as it may, my name is Caleb, and this is Da Nang. What a place. Now, some say that it's the. <laughs> Take two.